Coming up on Mountain News this morning, the Omicron variant makes its way to the Commonwealth, causing some concern among state health leaders. And one Kentucky city works hard to give aid to the people affected by tornadoes in western Kentucky. Dedicated to eastern and southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Good Monday morning to you. I'm Dakota Makris. It's just before 5 o'clock on this kind of cold morning. Let's head over to Brandon for a look at that forecast. And Brandon, I'm already all over the place. I'm complaining about the chips I've just had. I didn't clean my glasses before the newscast started. So happy Monday to you. Can you get your life together? No, I, cannot. I mean, it's Christmas week, okay? <laughs> it's Christmas week. We're in our last full day of fall here. I will try to behave as the best I can this okay, week. Okay, but I do have one question for you. Frost or no frost? Uh, no frost this morning. Okay, I had frost at my house, Ooh. so it was a little cooler at my house, but it was closer to 30 here and be a few clouds across the region. But as I said, this is the last full day of fall, so get out there and enjoy it. Chilly this morning, temperatures in the 20s and 30s. A few clouds around, but again, nothing too major out there. A warm response is a 30 in Moorhead and in Jackson, 23 in Wines, our cool spot for the moment. So a little extra because it's Monday, and of course, because it's cold, you'll need maybe a little bit of max warming. Our breakfast forecast, we are going to see our bowl filled with some chilly conditions out there, mostly clear skies. Temperatures will climb quickly as the sun rises a little after 744 this morning. Dakota. All right, Brendan, thank you so much. Well, the people of Clay County came together on Sunday afternoon to honor the life of Elmer Jr. Sparks, who was laid to rest. Sparks was the longtime fire chief for Big Creek Volunteer Fire and Rescue. The City of Manchester Fire Department originally reported Sparks' death in a Facebook post on December 12th. The post read, quote, Chief Sparks, thank you for your service to Clay County. May you rest in peace, and we will take it from here, end quote. Well, the Clay County Sheriff's Office is mourning the loss of one of its own. A Facebook post announced that Deputy Kelly Johnson died unexpectedly while off duty, saying in part, quote, Deputy Kelly Johnson served the citizens of Clay County with pride and integrity for many years. Our thoughts and prayers go out to Deputy Johnson's family and friends as they mourn his loss, end quote. Now, during his career, Deputy Johnson worked for the Clay County Sheriff's Office and Manchester City Police. Most recently, he was working for the Sheriff's Office as the school resource officer. Visitation will be tomorrow evening at 6 o'clock at Britain Funeral Home in Manchester. His funeral will also take place at the funeral home Wednesday morning at 11. Two Leslie County men are behind bars after police say one of the men pulled a gun on a deputy. Mark Jones and Jake Maggard were pulled over by Leslie County Police late Saturday night. In a post on the Sheriff's Department Facebook page, officers say Jones attempted to run from the car by jumping down a nearby cliff, but was caught soon after. The post goes on to say Jones had been cuffed in the front so that he could climb up the steep cliff, adding that while climbing, he tried to pull a gun out, but the deputy was able to take the weapon from him without incident. Both men are facing, are facing a host of charges. Kentucky has reported its first case of the Omicron variant of COVID-19. The state's health leaders say the virus could spread rapidly across the Commonwealth while emphasizing the importance of mask wearing in work and school settings. During Governor Andy Bashir's Team Kentucky update on Saturday, Dr. Stephen Stack noted just how infectious Omicron really is. And one person with the Delta variant may infect up to five other people. It may be that one person with Omicron could infect up to 18 to 20 additional people. Well, Dr. Stack also noted that hospitalization rates are not as high in countries where Omicron is prevalent, but urge Kentuckians to get the vaccine booster to protect themselves. Dr. Stack says it's likely breakthrough cases will increase with Omicron, but says He's confident vaccines provide protection against severe disease and death. Well, the city of Bowling Green is working to help families affected by the Western Kentucky tornadoes get the long term help they need. Now, the old Sears building at the at Greenwood Mall has turned into a FEMA registration and donation center. Victims of the recent tornadoes can come and pick up necessities like clothes and phone chargers, as well as receive assistance registering with FEMA for larger projects no matter what kind of assistance they need. And that doesn't mean you have lost your house. That is 
obviously, please come if you have, but that's also, you don't have electricity, you um, have lost your job. Any way that you are affected by this storm cell that came through, please come here, let us help you. Volunteers will be welcoming those affected by the tornado starting at 8 o'clock this morning. City officials say they are still in need of some items, including hair care for a variety of hair types, towels, batteries, and phone charging devices for those without power. Well, yesterday, Governor Andy Bashir was at Penny Ryle Forest State Park, just south of Dawson Springs. Now, and he came bearing gifts with hundreds of brand new shoes donated by Samaritan's Feet to hand out to the victims of the storms. Joining the governor were Lieutenant Governor Jacqueline Coleman and University of Kentucky head men's basketball coach John Calipari. Penny Ryle State Park is currently housing those displaced by the tornado, and there was a big turnout for the shoes. These people have lost everything, and these are these are my people. Um, most everybody here is from my dad's hometown, a place that I grew up. It shouldn't happen anywhere, but it doesn't happen here. And and to be able to be here today um, with Coach Cal and others, you know, creates I hope uh, a special moment. This is about people. This is about coming together. The athletic department. We all got together and did a telethon. This telethon raised five million dollars and in 48 hours he got 10,000 shoes also on hand were former Wildcat stars Darius Miller and Jack Goose Givens a total of 15,000 shoes will be given away well thank you so much for getting your Monday morning started with us here on Mountain News this morning when we come back thousands of jolly Saint Nick's take to the streets of a city in Spain all for a good cause if you're dreaming of a white Christmas this year, it might just be a dream after all. I'll have your very mild forecast in about three minutes. Um.